what would you consider traits that represent a good head coach? How about compulsive and pathological liar? No morals, exploiting employees, zero self-improvement over time, incredibly self-entitled, and when faced with adversity, run. He's a quitter. I mean, this guy just seems like a, a total liar and a fraud. Well, I think he's a creep for making the move now. I think he's a quitter. And it's a it's sweet so thing. I think Petrino's a fraud. Bobby Petrino is a quitter. This guy, I mean, what, what kind of a message are we sending? When the going gets tough, we quit. Having studied sports psychology and combining that with just observing how coaches are at the higher level, I have come to the realization some schools and teams just don't care what kind of person our coach is because the only thing that matters to them is winning and the bigger picture, money. So meet Bobby Petrino, a massive dirtbag who proves you don't need morals to coach major college football. Let's start at the beginning. In the late 20th century, Bobby Petrino worked his way up for nearly 20 years, proving he knows how to coach. In 1999, he lands himself his first job in the NFL, quarterbacks coach, Jacksonville. After two years of being a solid QB coach, Petrino was promoted to being the offensive coordinator. And after a year, he sees an opportunity to be the O coordinator at Auburn. But he did this reportedly without telling head coach Tom Coughlin. Coughlin didn't even know he had left until he heard about it through the media. And to say the least, he was furious. And he reportedly has never spoken to Petrino since. 2003, Petrino has now landed his first head coaching job. And while coaching his first season at Louisville, the team he had just left, Auburn, was now struggling. So Petrino went behind the back of his employer and held a secret meeting with Auburn officials just days before the season finale. Auburn had one game left and if they lost, their head coach was most likely going to be fired, and Petrino was planning on stepping in. Well, Auburn ended up winning the Iron Bowl, so they never fired their head coach. Petrino denied having any contact with Auburn officials, until two reporters confronted him with documentation proving he had a secret meeting. And even when he was faced with the evidence, Petrino still denied it. That was until Auburn issued a statement owning up to the whole situation. And with no other choice, Petrino asked for forgiveness, and he said it was due to the inexperience of being a young coach. Yeah, 20 years. Definitely not enough time to know you can't have secret meetings behind your employer's back. Oh, by the way, he won nine games that year, so of course, Louisville forgave him. Now, it's December of 2004. After signing a contract extension with Louisville, let me read the statement made by Petrino. Quote, I want to make it clear that I'm not interested in any other coaching jobs, and I'm happy at the University of Louisville. As I've stated before, Louisville is the perfect place to raise a family, and I plan on all four of my children to graduate from high school in Louisville. Having already interviewed with multiple teams in 2004, well, not a week passed by this interview, and he had already applied to coach for LSU, ultimately losing the job to Les Miles. Two years later, after a few more failed interviews, he signed a massive 10-year contract with Louisville, making yet another statement. Quote, I also wanted to make sure that everyone understood, and I know I've said it, that this is where my family wants to be and where I want to be. But I want everyone to really believe it when it is said. He wants everyone to really believe it. 10 years, an entire decade. You want to know how long he lasted? He made it through one season. He was now making double of what he made at Louisville. Bobby Petrino was going to take Michael Vick and turn him into more of a complete player. That was his apparent goal, but that's when everything took a turn for the worst. And along with this, Petrino apparently can't connect or get along with players because he was unanimously hated. Just listen to the words of Falcons owner Arthur Blank and also their president, Rich McKay. And I remember after we had hired Coach Petrino, I got calls from you know, two or three, three of our more experienced players within 60 days, which they've never, ever done. I mean, it's something that's never happened to them. And basically said to me, um, hello, uh, do, you, uh, do you know what you've done? <laughs> really? We don't want to have to go to meals and have a rule that you're not allowed to talk. That just doesn't seem to me to be a good rule, uh, that we're going to sit at a table 
and we're gonna have all these tables around here and we have all these adult players and the rule is you can't talk. Mm, seems to me that's a little bad rule. Okay, to be fair, coaches have been hated in the past, but they can still rally the troops and win games at the least. Now in the face of adversity, it was time for Bobby Petrino to prove he had what it takes to overcome tough times. And bleeding. Steven Jackson on the carry side, steps a tackle, runs left, 35, 30, down the sideline, 20, 15, 10, 5, battle ceiling. After yet another loss, the press was going to drill owner Arthur Blank about the coaching situation. So I said to Bobby, you know what, I mean, tell me what you want me to tell him. I mean, tell me what, you, what you're feeling. He said, I remember him standing up and reaching out and shaking my hand saying, you tell me you have a coach. I said, okay, I'll tell him that I have a coach. So, without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce the 30th head football coach in the history of the Arkansas Razorbacks, Bobby Petrino. Bobby? You want to hear how he left? He put a note in the lockers of players with a stamped signature. He couldn't tell them face to face like a man he was leaving, but that's what cowards do. I think the best way to describe the way that um, we feel is betrayed and, uh, and let down. At this point, maybe you haven't bought into him being that bad. Sure, leaving multiple times is a sign of no loyalty and he's a proven liar. But hey, he's still a good college football coach. And he's a family man. He has four kids and is apparently happily married. Good evening, Craig. We're live here in Fayetteville, and here's what we know. Arkansas football coach Bobby Petrino was involved in a motorcycle accident last night around 645 on Arkansas 16 in Madison County near Crosses. After a motorcycle accident, Petrino was all messed up. He had lost control and landed in a ditch. Luckily, no other vehicles or people were involved. Apparently, he had spent the day at the lake with his wife. Then he had decided to go for a good old night ride by himself. You said you were alone on the bike, right? Were you yeah. alone? You were alone. As this YouTube comment puts it, you want to know how Bobby Petrino's lying? If his lips are moving. He wasn't the only one on the bike that day. He had a passenger, 25-year-old Jessica Durrell, a former Arkansas volleyball player who Bobby Petrino hired as a well underqualified student athlete development coordinator, aka his mistress. It started with a kiss a year previous and slowly progressed from there. It went on with extensive gift giving from Petrino, including 20 grand for Christmas. Some of this money was going to help pay for a car, wedding expenses, and a vacation. Wait, wedding expenses? Oh yeah, by the way, the girl was engaged at the time. Yeah, so Arkansas was going to fire Petrino. And when he got wind of this, he made it clear who he was because rules don't apply to you when you're a big time college football coach. So now he was gone and yet another team had to feel the wrath of devastation left by Petrino. And here's the part that truly disgusts me. After a year at Western Kentucky, he was hired by Louisville, the team he had deserted after signing a 10 year contract, the team he had completely lied to and then continued to destroy his reputation as we head into the ACC, but somebody that definitely is a changed person. Uh, I don't think anybody will ever quarrel with his knowledge in the game. Just to clear that up, he means, hey, we don't care how bad of a person he is or what he's done to us in the past. He wins football games, and that's the only thing that matters. Thank for you, Abel. I mean, he is such an awesome coach, and I think he'll be here for a long time. I mean, so we left once before. We've all done, we've all left things and come back. And that's what it's all about is second chances. People who back up Bobby Petrino like this, congratulations, you are brainless and you have no morals. Oh, interesting, look what happens two years later. Wake Forest had some of their game plans leaked out the week they happened to play Louisville. Oh yeah, by the way, Bobby Petrino denied any involvement or knowledge of this. All the things I mentioned in this video are the things he's been caught doing. Imagine all the things he's lied about that we don't know. Who made few friends in the locker room during his brief tenure in Atlanta. Some players expressed relief at Petrino's decision. There was a lot of smiles going on in his locker room. It makes me sick. 